Lewis Black is the Chairman, President, and CEO of Almonte Industries, Inc. Lewis, welcome to the Investor Intel studio via telephone. I thank you very much for having me. I understand we've found you in Europe, and Europe, of course, is where quite a number of your properties are, Spain and Portugal. Um, you've had um, a, a busy time this year. You've, you've acquired quite a few assets, uh, and that's the story. But I'd like to start, if I may, with talking about tungsten a bit and its main uses. Well, I would say that um, uh, tungsten is, is, is over, the uses of it date back until the sort of turn of the 19th century. Um, but essentially, 50% of all tungsten is consumed in, in automobile and, and aerospace sectors. So if the car and, and the plane industries are doing well, uh, there's always a strong demand for tungsten. And uh, basically, I always say with tungsten, it's a, it's a metal that very few people really know about but in fact touches everybody's lives every day mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that it is in everything that you see around you. All manufacturing, anything that generates heat and friction will have a component of tungsten to protect the alloy uh, that, that is being used to produce that, that pr product with tungsten. Uh, when you land on a plane, your braking systems, the turbines, uh, when you manufacture the plane or the cars, you need the inserts. Uh, if you drill for oil, gas, you mine, you need tungsten coated uh, drill bits, or, you know, various carbides that you use. So if you remove tungsten from your life, you would not see the same world around you because it is the key component, an irreplaceable key component for manufacturing an all heavy industry. Now, your, your expertise and your company's expertise, as I understand it, Lewis, is turning around projects that haven't been very profitable in the past? I would say that our expertise is not um, as a fix-it. Our expertise is five generations of tungsten knowledge. Uh, the, the, the guys within our core, our core team are our fifth-generation tungsten experts, whether they be in, in, in essentially the engineering, whether it be the hard rock mining, the open pit, the metallurgical side, a geolog geological side, that's their expertise. Their fathers did it, their grandfathers did it. We merely acquire sites that previous management could not make work. Um, you know, one thing you say about tungsten is that for some reason, many gold guys seem to think it's easy because it shares the same density as gold. But it is the complete opposite to, to mine gold that is the tungsten. Tungsten is extremely brittle, which means every process you go through, you lose some of the material. And that knowledge to be able to, to produce a, a, this very difficult material to extract uh, has been lost uh, because most of the Western mines closed 30, 40 years ago. We were very fortunate that our core team came out of our Panascara mine, which has been running for 126 years uninterrupted. And, and so there's that mine, and there's a mine in Austria called Midasul, which has been going for, for nearly 50 years now, where that knowledge still exists. But outside of that, there's really no consultant you can call, no book you can go to. It's an extremely difficult metal to work. So that's really our expertise. Uh, the, the, the demand and supply globally now, Lewis, is, if I understand correctly, China, the big, the big supplier and the big consumer. Are things shifting a bit? I think that the one thing you can say about tungsten is that its demand uh, curve is consistent and has been now for, for the last two decades. We see a 3% increase every year in demand, it just globally. It, 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 so you can set your watch by it. What we have is China obviously is the largest producer of a concentrate, which they cannot export uh, from China, but they, they can downstream uh, their products and then export that. And they are obviously a voracious consumer of it. Um, but you have to look at who the customers are within the West. And they are the, the sort of blue chip companies that you can only dream of. The, the, the car manufacturers, the, the, obviously the aircraft manufacturers, uh, the Sandvik's of the world. Uh, so, uh, but the, in terms of demand, it's 3% every year. Well, the supply you, is predominantly Chinese. So you've been acquiring assets, your, your press releases earlier this year have been 
about acquiring another asset in Spain, uh, another asset uh, in South Korea, uh, and so on. Um, the, the price has been a bit depressed in the last while and there seems to be more volatility, but it seems to be rising in recent months. Are you responding to that with the acquisitions? I think, well, I think that we've made these acquisitions because the, the current pricing uh, environment has enabled us to see value in, in acquiring these sites um, because we believe completely in the strategy of consolidation, because we believe with consolidation, you can react to the market. When, when things are good, you can increase output. When they're bad, you can reduce it. You, you can, because up till now, uh, all cluster mines in the West have been standalone mines. So uh, one problem with that mine is a problem for the company. Mm -hmm. and, and in every mine, you always have ups and downs. This is the nature of being an operator. Uh, and so our view is consolidation is, is, is the way forward. Just, just to refresh our collective memories, uh, Lewis, please, you've, you've got production now and you've added uh, past producers and you've added, in the case of uh, the, the relatively new asset, uh, Sangdong, in South Korea, which I think you've characterized um, as being maybe the crown jewel of your portfolio. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to have production and and bring on other production and you'll be able to stage this and what what are the plans with that portfolio well i think that there are there are certain pressing things that we have to address uh firstly going back to your previous question regarding price the price unfortunately is governed by a mechanism that worked wonderfully well 25 years ago when there was actually a fluid liquid spot business but in these last 25 years, there has been an enormous amount of consolidation and uh, within basically our customers. And, and therefore, the amount of spot business is almost negligible. I think the last estimate done uh, was less than 4% of all world trade is done on spot. And yet that drives the price. And so we've seen huge volatility in this price because of this illiquid mechanism. In terms of our plan, Sandong is the crown jewel. It, it is a mine that is... Uh, similar to our Portuguese project 40 years ago. It has 70 plus years of reserves. It has the highest grade that exists out in the West. Um, it, it's, it's a brownfields operation, so someone else has paid for the, the infrastructure. But our plan is to balance our output to the demands of our customers. And we have pretty much now total saturation of the Western customer base. So we will continue to develop and, and ship product at the request of our clients who feel that uh, dependency on China is not a long-term strategy or not a dependency 100% for their, their raw material needs. And so they've been very supportive. But that is our strategy. We have no intention of bringing product into the market that does not already have a customer. Your customers... Um, use of tungsten within their finished products as a percentage is relatively small, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, th this is one of the factors that I think many people uh, don't realize, that pr this market is not price-driven because the amount of tungsten that they consume at the end is, is negligible. Um, but at the same time, your customer is always looking for the best possible price, mm -hmm. and so would, 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 would certainly disagree with me on, <laughs> on that comment. Well, but, 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 but it's not, they're, not, they're not all that picky other than they want competition. They, they want basically a, a viable Western uh, source uh, that is, uh, has a reliable uh, supply uh, track record. We've never breached the supply contract. We've always, you know, the U.S. Postal Service, can rain or shine, we deliver, <laughs> even if it's actually to our detriment. But a contract is a contract. When things are good, your customer takes all the material that he orders and he pays for it on time. When things are bad, we are expected to continue that process. And unfortunately, many people who are in the junior mining space fail to understand that as an operator, you can't always have it good that there are times where you have to eat hamburger instead of steak. 
and so you know our cost controls came in last year when we started seeing after last summer prices start to weaken we immediately put in our cost control programs and continue to do so uh, because we can't just close up shop and say well we'll see you again when the prices recover um, we have an obligation under our contracts and our customers have been very supportive they pay us the highest prices in, you know, for, for our material and they they do everything they can to be able to facilitate our survival when things are bad. In terms of delivering to your customers, it brings me now to ask about the um, recent announcement of acquiring Vin Bao, uh, the processing facility in in Vietnam. Um, you'll be now able to supply your customers with a finished product as opposed to raw material, or what's the strategic fit for Vin Bao? Our customers are in the, the, the APT oxide powder business. Uh, they're not in the ferrotungsten business. Uh, we would never dare to imagine ourselves downstreaming into a product that competes with our existing customers. Uh, this would be, uh, for want of a better word, completely unethical and, and would be not very well appreciated by our customers. The idea of acquiring a ferrotungsten part, a brand new ferrotungsten part, uh, that produces a Rolls Royce spec of ferrotungsten, is because, A, it has Japanese clients who we know already through our concentrate business and obviously through our esteemed friends at Sojits. Um, and we know that the, the, the levels of loyalty these Japanese clients have to a, to, to a product is, is extremely good. And secondly, because it's a, it's a way of protecting some of our margin when we're in a low price environment. So uh, whether we supply it with... Uh, additional capacity that we have through the company or we're going to have. Um, it, it's a way of just capturing some margin to protect us, obviously, from this current situation. So it's a new departure for us, but it'll be the only downstream departure that we do. We will not be looking to, to downstream into any other product except for our tungsten. Lewis, what, what else can we expect uh, in the way of news in the latter half of 2016? Well, I think we've obviously announced the, the, the debt financing from KDB, the Korean Development Bank, for the Samdong project. I think that our shareholders should look out in the next six months for the announcement of the equity portion of that uh, build. Uh, I think they should also look to uh, some dramatic reductions of our debt ratio currently. Um, you know, one thing that's always pointed out to us by those who aren't uh, intrinsically linked with Amonti is that they consider our debt ratio to be, uh, you know, we're close to 60%, it should be dangerously high. What they've always failed to really look at or analyze is the major vast majority of that debt is through friendly hands. It, it's not punitive, it's low interest, it's unsecured. It, it's essentially been the vehicle that we've used to be able to grow this business without subjecting our shareholders, including myself, as a very large shareholder, to, to enormous amounts of dilution. Um, but over the next six months, uh, there is now a program in place to dramatically reduce that uh, through a, a process of conversion to bring that ratio down closer to 40%. So I think those are the two main things that, that our, our shareholders should look for. The, the finalization of the equity for the Samsung build so we can commence uh, cleaning the project in October of this year and a dramatic reduction in our current debt ratio to bring us back into levels that, that we consider to be acceptable. Lewis, thanks very much. It sounds like your interests are completely aligned with those of shareholders and uh, that the story will continue just to unfold in a positive way. Thanks for, well, I thanks, think, well, thanks for updating us. As one of the largest shareholders in that, Monty, I should be aligned <laughs> with, with the shareholders. Well, that's a great story. Well, thank you very much. All right. We'll look forward to the next thanks, update. Sir. Thanks, Lewis.